Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Blah. <laughs> Let's try that again. Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Coffee and Headlines. This is our daily get together live here on Facebook every morning of the week, 1030 in the morning, where we dissect headlines, comments, ideas, thoughts, suggestions, and all kinds of information that helps us have an awesome life here in Puerto Vallarta as an English speaking community of locals. It is always a pleasure to get together with each and every one of you. Um, and particularly to welcome anybody that is new to our little get-togethers. If you are new to these broadcasts, please feel free to let us know by writing the word new in your comments. And if you have an important question that you wish to bring up during the broadcast, it helps a lot if you add the letter Q before it. And if we are not able to get to it during the broadcast, it will be a pleasure to dive in right after the broadcast is over. Today, I have the tamales uh dancing tamal on board because i want to keep it there as a reminder that i want to share a little bit of tamal related information before we dive into the news um and then we have all kinds of interesting news to share today we have follow-up from yesterday's um uh, information about the new venue that is across the street from the church we also have follow-up from lord uh, my shoes from Mexico City. And of course, it is Wednesday, Wednesday, uh, January 27th, and it is Walking Wednesday. And today we are going to walk along Cinco de Diciembre, and we're going to pay a surprise visit to a friend's restaurant. And I'm, we're going to take a look at a couple of other wonderful restaurants that you can find in Cinco de Diciembre. So it should be really, really fun, or at least I hope it will be. Let us start, as always, by saying... Uh, hi to a few of our friends that are here in the house. Uh, El Centro is in the house. Good morning, Karen. It's great to see you. Um, James Binder knows what we're up to because he knows that Wednesday is for walking. It's great to see you, James. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, my friend Celeste is here. She is one of my favorite thespians here in town. And uh, I will let you know that Celeste is really excited to start brewing some plants to to shake and bake and move and stir the pot as far as local English speaking theater is concerned. And um, all I'm going to say is that I am sure she'll come up with something wonderful. Uh, let's see what else we have. Spokane is in the house. Hello, Carol. It's great to see you. Um, boom, ba -ding, bam, 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 bam. Uh huh. Michael says, it snowed yesterday. I am sorry to hear that. I used to think snow was beautiful. Then I lived in snow for years, and then I changed my mind. Um, let's see what else. Alan, sorry to hear that your vaccine appointment was canceled. Hopefully, you'll be able to reschedule. Uh, let's see what else we have. It's Paco time, says Julie. I say, it's Julie time. <laughs> Um, thank you for the t-shirt remark, Gary. It is all part of today's uh, production, and you'll see why in a second. Um, let's see what else. Let's see what else. That sounds absolutely scrumptious, Then You know, I always try to make it a point to 
I always say I want to get to Artisan Bakery early in the morning, but of course, early in the morning is a time in which I'm busy putting together our broadcast, but I do want to get for some get over there for some of those sweet pastries before they run out. Um, well, wouldn't you like to know, Sean? It's um, uh, okay. So, so here's the surprise: the show is going to be all about Sean today. Today is Sean's day, and I'll explain myself in a second. Um, Suzanne finally got around to watching Massacre at the stadium. Thank you very much, Suzanne, for following up on that wonderful uh, uh, documentary about, um, oh, 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 te recuerdo, Amanda, Victor Jara, Victor Jara, the wonderful South American um, composer. When is our next music program? Well, we always try to talk about music. Um, it is always so challenging, Suzanne, because whenever we talk about music, it's kind of like, it's kind of like talking about wine and not having it in front of you to taste it. It always becomes a little challenging. But we keep trying to find a way to talk about music without upsetting Facebook or YouTube and their copyright policemen. Um, so we will definitely try to do this sometime in the near future. My goodness, you all notice my clothes and that makes me self-conscious because that means I need to go buy some new ones. Um, Likewise, Doug, thank you very much. It was great to see you as well. Uh, let's see what else, let's see what else. Um, Kevin Bryant, you are first on our list. I am so glad you're joining us. I will explain why you are important as well in a second, and I am so glad that you're here. I want to welcome you again to, uh, to Coffee and Headlines. Uh, let's see. Well, as long as Kevin is here, and we're going to talk about Kevin in a second, let me get my tamales, a uh, little bit of information of the day out of the way, and then we'll dive into the news and so forth and so on. Um, I told you we are going through countdown to Dia de la Candelaria. As we know, February the 2nd is the day in which we go out and crazy and gain a lot of weight because we eat tamales. This means a couple of things. Number one, if you're still trying to get a space for Carmen Porras' beautiful tamal making class, we've been listing the information on the show notes. I am sure that Carmen and Claudia would let us know if they are live how they're doing uh, with their subscriptions. And uh, if Carmen or Claudia, if you guys are here, let us know and feel free to post information about how people can learn how to make their own tamales. It's an afternoon class this coming Friday. I believe it was only 500 pesos or 400. I don't remember, but it is a great way to learn how to make them. And of course, Coffee and Headlines, yours truly is producing a great video on everything you've wanted to know about tamales here in Puerto Vallarta, where they come from, where to find them, what makes a good tamal different from a not so good tamal, how to eat them, how to avoid making presidential mistakes like Gerald Ford who ate the husk and so forth and so on. This video will be available Monday to all um, supporting members. If you are a supporting member of Coffee and Headlines, you don't need to do anything. You will be receiving an announcement. And why is the tamal dancing? It is dancing because I want to share this phrase with you, just in case you wanted to learn a new phrase about tamales. El que nace para tamal, del cielo le caen las hojas. Literally translated, it means he or she who is born to be a tamal will have leaves falling from the sky, leaves being the, the husks or the, the wrapping leaves. And what the saying means, of course, is that if you're born to do something, um, life will give you the tool set or the skills for you to flourish in whatever you are doing. So that is a nice little saying. So we can get rid of that and we can get rid of that and we can get on with the news. Oh, I was supposed to get rid of the tamale. Hold on. Boom. There you go. So as long as Kevin is on the screen, let me just go on and uh, take a look at the news. Well, I want to start with Kevin because Kevin is one of the new owners of this business called Candy Bar. Kevin uh, reached out to, to us yesterday through the comments. If you go back and read 
the comments from yesterday's broadcast, Kevin was very generous to share with us an entire account of all the trials and tribulations he's been going through to try to create a bridge with the community nearby, with the church and so forth and so on. So uh, it was great to hear from you, Kevin. Again, as I, I, as I mentioned in my comment, our point here is not so much to agree or disagree, but to try to understand and be level-headed about what we see that is going on. Uh, from the looks of it, you are being executed, and we all get executed from time to time. And what I mean by a execution is when things are just done differently than what you're used to, and it'll either make you or it'll break you, but it's part of the process of moving to another country and... Uh, and I've been executed, and it's not something that only happens to foreigners. You know, it happens to us locals as well. You know, when you show up to renew your driver's license and you read the instructions and you think you have every single fucking paper you're supposed to have with you, and you wait two hours online, and uh, and then you get to the window and they tell you, oh no, but you're missing the one that is ba 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 ba. You know, that's an execution. When somebody promises you that your cabinetry is going to be ready by Tuesday, and then two weeks go by, and finally your carpenter shows up and he says, well, lo que pasa es que, and he gives you a, some kind of crazy excuse, and he has had to bury his grandmother for the third or fifth time, that's an execution. So for better or worse, for anyone that is doing business <laughs> or learning to live in another country, there's going to be a little bit of that. So again, I'm not taking sides on the church. I'm not taking sides on the business. But we do hope that you're able to go through your hurdles and uh, and put together a wonderful business that is as, cur as culturally diverse as it is appropriate. In the case of a restaurant bar, you know, uh, my own personal take on that is is a wish that all per, uh, restaurants and bars and businesses that cater to both Spanish speaking people and Mex and English speaking people will provide a welcoming environment to both cultures by creating information in both languages. Enough said. Now, going back to our headlines, um, in case you were wondering, we are living in the worst country to live during COVID-19. According to Bloomberg, Bloomberg tells us that because of Mexico's high lethality, oh dear, I cannot even say that word, but because of the way Mexico is faring with deaths and so forth and so on through the pandemic, we are just next to South Africa as the worst country to live uh, during the pandemic, we are on, on, on we are number 53 of 53 countries. So what can I tell you? I feel um, that we are having a good life down here, but I can also acknowledge that there have to be some areas of the country and communities that are faring not so well, and it is important to be mindful of that, I think. We also learned through the headlines that Guadalajara and Vallarta are the two places in the state of Jalisco where 95% unemployment is taking place or took place during 2020. There are some details here saying that um, during the last year, uh, 57,999 formal jobs were lost. Uh, and this is very sad news because, again, 95% of, of those losses took place in uh, Puerto Vallarta and in Guadalajara. And it's always difficult to, to read this kind of news as we're struggling to find ways to make a living and we're trying to be creative and reinvent ourselves. All I can say is if you are hiring, try to hire as much as you can if you are a regular citizen and you have the opportunity to build our economy by going out and having a meal every now and then, by donating to a cause. You know, it is entirely up to us to do whatever we can do to improve our economy here. Me, I, you know, all this COVID that I have in my tummy, you know, I'm choosing to support restaurants as much as I can because that's what I can do. I enjoy eating and I enjoy sharing good eateries with you. So I'm sure we will all find a way to be as supportive of the local economy as we can. 
things in Nayarit are taking a turn for the worse. Uh, there is this um, official communication from the state of Nayarit that I'm going to tell you about. It does not affect uh, Riviera Nayarit. It does not affect uh, Nuevo Vallarta or these communities that are part of Banderas Bay. But apparently, starting on Friday, Friday the 29th, that is in two days, Friday, Saturday the 30th, and Sunday the 31st, all unessential commercial activities in Tepic and in the coastal zone of San Blas, which is further north, are going to shut down. This measure will only apply for three days during the first instance, and subsequently, um, all non-essential businesses will close on Saturdays and Sundays. Again, this is for Tepic and the coastal area of San Blas. Um, there are other adjustments that are going to be made uh, that have to do with public transportation, with outdoor vendors, and of course, um, the, the, the obligatory use of face masks um, and here, item number four says that if you are out and about and you are not wearing your face mask, even when the authorities ask you to do so, you will be taken, um, you will be taken, you will be fined and you will be taken to a judge so that you can be, uh, you can receive your fine. Um, and it also says that the sidewalks in downtown Tepic will be set up in such a way that people are only walking in one direction. I know that sidewalks are narrow in the city of Tepic, so that makes perfect sense to me. So again, the good news is we don't necessarily have to worry too much about this right now, but it also means that uh, let us hope that these kinds of stronger measures are not coming to, uh, are not coming to, you know, our the bay our area um more news to share it is good to hear that the president of mexico andres manuel lopez obrador is uh is going through covid in a favorable way he doesn't have a he doesn't seem to have a bad case of covid this has been confirmed by hugo lopez gatel who gave a report of the president's um symptoms uh so it's comforting to know that the president of our country is not having a really bad case of COVID, and hopefully he will be completely back in business as soon as possible. Um, oh, this is important because, I, I mean, I just, how could we not be happy about this? Marijuana reduces the risk of getting COVID-19, <laughs> according to this, to this study, um, which I haven't read the study, but, you know, as soon as I saw it, as, as I, Blech. As soon as I saw that headline, I figured, well, I'm going to smoke to that. Um, so according to a study uh, published in a, in, a, in, a, in a publication called Agent, Aging, Aging uh, people that are uh, uh, pot smokers or consumers or whatever or not, decrease the chances of getting COVID-19. Uh, yay, potheads, here we are. Maybe this is why I'm feeling so good about today. Uh, and no, I'm not suggesting you, you become a pothead like myself or any other pothead you may know. It is electoral period here in the Bay, as I've mentioned before. And the pressure against, the pressure that our mayor usually enforces well it's not only our mayor but all mayors will uh traditionally put some pressure on their employees to collect signatures for people that will guarantee to vote for their political party uh, mayor davalos according to this report has delivered these little forms for employees to to fill out and has already threatened some of these employees by saying, if you don't get these 10 people each to vote for our party, you will lose your job. And I can certify that this is happening because a friend of mine who works for, uh, for Davalos sent me a WhatsApp message saying, uh, well, we're looking for people to vote. So here is your chance, blee, 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 blah, blah, blah. So don't be alarmed by this habit or this, this way of doing things. It's not that our mayor is being particularly crooky about the situation. It is 
the way it's been done in the past. Maybe it will change in the future. Who knows? But I thought I would let you know in case you have friends that, of course, if you're able to vote, if you have um, the, the Mexican residents and you're able to vote, if you have friends that start to persuade you to join a certain political campaign, that's why it's happening. Let me take a quick look at some of your comments because they are all very important. And uh, ooh, let's see what we had. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Other than the snippet in this article, does anyone have information about the testing available at the airport? Um, I would have to look at the snippet, Terry. Uh, I do know that airports are starting to do this, and I know that our airport is one of those. Um, I would check on the airport website to see if you can find uh, uh, some particular information. If I run into something that is more specific, I'll be happy to share. Uh, let's see. I would love to contribute to you, but I cannot get on PayPal. They want me to send them a letter. Oh dear, that's not that's not good. Well, Diane, first of all, thank you so much for wanting to be a supporting member of Coffee and Headlines. Um, if you are in town, I can offer an alternative solution. If you're not in town, then uh, and you don't have PayPal, then I am sorry, we don't have a specific way to to welcome supporters at this present time so you can continue to be an awesome cheerleader for this community of ours uh let's see what else we have kevin says i am fine stronger and i understand more now we are fine and we are still open but i want you to know the truth Again, as, I, as we said yesterday, Kevin, very well, first of all, again, welcome to this community. We try to be as nurturing as we possibly can. We try to support local business people and local members of our community as much as we can. Just know that you're not you're not alone in your execution. We all get executed, and I am sure that as you start mingling with other members of the business community here in town, you will have more of an appreciation. I'm not saying that it's fair or unfair, but it's just part of the process of learning the habits and the ways of life of a different culture in a different country. Um, let's see. Very wise words from Stephanie. Thank you very much. Uh, please let's not make generalizations and continue to stereotype the other. Have more respect. I'm not entirely sure I understand what you mean. Uh, if you can be more specific, I would appreciate it, Luis, because the last thing we want to do here is to be disrespectful. But if you can explain what you mean by other, I would be extremely grateful. Um... I was executed when applying for my residence. Yay, execution! I have shared the execution video with you of my friend who owns a hotel in San Pancho, and she ended up having a guest with a scorpion bite on his penis. It's actually quite hysterical. But yes, we all get executed, and it's part of the part of the process, I suppose. Uh, let's see. Um, da, 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 da. Let's see what else. Let's see what else. I don't see any cues. I don't see any cues. So I am going to continue with our news and now we can switch over to the leisurely stuff. And leisurely, of course, starts with weather. It is 22 degrees Celsius right now, feels like 23. That would be 72 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, humidity is at 54%, per, uh, not as bad as yesterday. And our weather forecast tells us that it's going to be partly cloudy through the day. And uh, with high temperature of 27, low temperature of 18. Tomorrow, partly cloudy again. High temperature of 29, low temperature 19. And the third one, which would be the Friday, would be clear through the day. Friday will be a clear day uh, with a high temperature of 31, low temperature of 19. So um, this is good to know. No rain, no umbrella. This is perfectly expected. And uh, let me take a 
quick look at, oh, well, so many interesting uh, facts are coming out of the latest census from Mexico, and I've yet to take a dive into the actual website of the census company because um, I've been busy doing other things. But check this out. Here we look in this chart at what Mexicans have and don't have at home in terms of appliances. So according, this is this comparison in all of these categories. The purple would be this year, 2020, or last year rather, and the green would be uh, 10 years ago. Uh, so uh, this shows that um, less people have a refrigerator now than they used to have 10 years ago. Less people have a washing machine. Less people have a car. And um, slightly more people have... Oh, it, I'm sorry. It's the other way around. It's the other way around. Um, the purple is 2010 and the green is 20. 20. So more people have a refrigerator than 10 years ago. More people have a washing machine and a car than 10 years ago. Less people have a, a television. But look at how the spike went up in terms of having a cell phone. 87.5% of the population has a cell phone when compared to 65.1 10 years ago. And uh, But now less people listen to the radio, 676 but look at the increase on uh, on internet. Now, 52% or half of the population has internet. But can you imagine that 10 years ago, only 21% of the population had internet in Mexico? That is absolutely shocking to me. The number of people that have a computer, a laptop, or a tablet also increased. And the number of people that have a landline at home decreased. So many of us... Um, so many of us um, being uh, more inclined to use our cell phone to connect. Um, in other news, uh, the INEGI, which is the National Institute of Statistics and Geography, has confirmed that it's going to collaborate with the Human Rights Commission in Mexico to conduct an LGBTQ survey during the second half of this year. It'll be very interesting to see our governor our government go out and do a census of the lesbian, gay, and so forth and so on population here in our country. Uh, along the leisurely stuff that I also want to share with you today before we move into our walk, um, I saw this article from Azteca Noticias where they proposed nine different circuits on how to enjoy nature in Puerto Vallarta. I'm going to mention them just to see how many of these things you've actually done or not. Uh, they recommend first, if you want to be hiking, they recommend Playa Colomitos, which is on the way to Las Animas. They recommend the Cerro de la Cruz, which we did a walking tour not too long ago. They recommend the, the waterfalls in Palo Maria, which I've never seen and I've always wanted to. And then if you're a bicycle rider, they recommend riding through the downtown area. I don't think so. Um, and then they recommend El Jorullo, which is this area, this, um, this um, ejido uh, up the Rio Cuale, where I enjoy exploring by foot. And then they recommend you go riding your bicycle up to La Bufa in San Sebastián. Um, no, thank you. That's really, really steep. And if you're going by boat, they recommend visiting Quimixto, which is on the way to Yelapa, which would be the next recommendation, and Majahuitas. These are all three beautiful um, uh, destinations in Puerto Vallarta South Shore that you can explore to your liking. Um, a little bit of shaming, but I think it's worth it. Uh, this resort, Vallarta Gardens in Riviera Nayarit, has decided to be not very friendly and decided to block what used to be an absolutely open, beautiful beach so that people cannot actually get into their area of the beach. As you know, beach is federal land in Mexico and beach, the beach is open for everyone. So how unfortunate that this particular resort, Vallarta Gardens, decided to bring in huge boulders and block access to their beach. See, this is what happens when you come in. Well, never mind. I'm not even go, <laughs> going to get into my own opinion here because I don't want to create more controversy where there shouldn't be. Um, a quick update on our favorite uh, Lord of the Week, uh, Lord My Shoes or Lord Mis Zapatos, which we've been following 
uh, since the beginning of the week, is going to be called in to testify by the police after being aggressive with um, and, and showing all kinds of privilege uh, and was captured in video, of course. We don't know what kind of consequences this will have for this gentleman or his business, but that's what you get when you are being an asshole. Lastly, I want to... <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, for those of you that enjoy audiobooks, apparently Spotify is now dabbling in them. They've taken nine public domain works and they are being read by important uh, English-speaking celebrities. The titles include Frankenstein, Great Expectations, and Jane uh, E-Y-R-E. -E. I never know how to pronounce Jane's last name, so I'm not going to try. If you're a Spotify user and you love your audiobooks, this is something you may want to consider. A quick look at your comments, and then we dive into our walk of the day. I can't believe how fast time is flying this morning. Um, let me see. Let me see. Uh, uh, there's another new person. Hello, Margaret. We will give you all the information that we can about our, about our community as soon as the show is over. Um... Let's see, let's see. Bum, 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 bum. Uh, <laughs> I like that theory, and I can say that I agree, Gary. Thank you very much. When will Miss Mary be legal here in PV? Um, slowly, Larry, it's, it's taking some time. It is now being approved as medicinal purposes. Just yesterday, Olga, what's her face, who's our Secretary of Government, um, answered a question to that effect, and of course, uh, we indicate, as she indicated, that the, the government is still burning crops of pot because the, the mechanism by which they're going to be legalized is not yet defined. But we can say hopefully soon. We can say it'll happen ah, hopefully soon. Fingers crossed. Let's see. Ka question. Why can't I get the comments off the screen? I would rather look at you. I am not sure, Linda. I make them appear and then I make them disappear. Let me bring this down a little bit so you can look at me. Although, ooh, you're looking at me. I don't know what to say. <laughs> let's see. Let's see. Is it true that in Mexico it's easier to get a cell phone than landline installed and cheaper too? I would think that is true. Oh, no. My next door neighbor who sings out of tune is singing. So... It is what it is. Um, yes, it is true to get, it is it is easier to get a cell phone than to get a landline. You can just walk into a shop and you are sold a unit with a number. And in fact, you can even buy them at Costco, at Kiosco or Oxo, I believe. Uh, let's see. Uh, simply love your program oh thank you very much doug we try we try we try to be as helpful as we can larry uh, who is also another one of the investors at candy has shared the website so that we can all take a look at how it's going again best wishes with your endeavor the church can be tricky and um, just 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 hang in there paul thank you very much jane Eyre, like what comes out from between my legs but you didn't need to know that We've talked about it before. <laughs> Air, Jane Air. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. Thank you very much. Regarding the blockade of the beach, how can they get away with this? Oh, Claude. Oh, Claude. It's one of those things. It is sad. It is sad. But again, it's one of those things that there's only so much we can do about it. You know, it's like I would love to give him a phone call and say, you know, if you had a day pass, you know, screw this. I'm not going to go enjoy your day pass because this is what you're doing. Um... Okay, so I'm caught up with your comments. Walk, our walk, our walk, our walk for the day is coming up. It is going to be about 15 minutes, but I'll stick around. And I want you to notice that in this walk, I did not use the word chingadera. We know that we love the word chingadera. We use it very frequently here to re refer to everything and anything or whenever we're at a loss of words. But in this particular case, I made sure that I was not using the word chingadera because I was walking next to a lot of vendors and stores where they are desperately trying to make you stop and buy something and where by using the word chingadera, I might have been offensive 
and I did not want to ruffle any feathers. Again, chingadera is a tricky word that can be used either to refer to this, that, or the other, or it can also be misconstrued as something being very offensive. So let us take a look at this. And I forgot to put a title. Uh -huh. We are now, hello. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't even say hello. Hello, we are now walking along the main access road to the city on Cinco de Diciembre. There are a couple of reasons why we're doing this walk today. First of all, because I'm headed into town. Secondly, because as long as we're here, I want to point out a couple of important places. And secondly, or lastly rather, because I haven't eaten and I'm in search of some tacos and beer. But before we do that, let me take a quick turn to the right here, because I want to show you one of my favorite restaurants in town and one of the best seafood restaurants here in the city. Okay, I am approaching Barracuda which is located here in Cinco de Diciembre and I'm going to show you a little bit of what you can expect inside and let's make sure that I come in and introduce myself. Hola, buenas tardes. ¿Puedo pasar a echar un vistazo? Gracias. So this is Barracuda, and if there's a seafood restaurant that I frequent quite a lot here in the city, it is this place. First of all, it is located right next to the ocean. It is al fresco, so you can always enjoy a nice breezy meal here. You can choose to sit upstairs, or you can actually choose to sit down on the ocean. And a beautiful thing about this location is that it offers you a great view of the bay that you may not use to seeing. And as you can see, people are laid back here on the beach having a good time. And as far as the menu that you can enjoy here, you can enjoy a variety of appetizers, tacos, and uh, seafood, uh, seafood options and a couple of beef options as well that are beautifully, beautifully prepared. So this is a place, muchas gracias. This is a place that you can keep in mind if you're ever looking for a nice, tasty seafood meal. And now let me walk for one block and then go back to the main avenue so that I can continue to show you around. The nice thing of this stretch in Cinco de Diciembre is that you are right next to the ocean and the neighborhood has a number of accesses to the beach as in contrast with other neighborhoods where access to the beach is more complicated here. Just about every street that ends up by the ocean is a comfortable place to access the ocean. Um, in case you're wondering, right across the street is Semarnat. This is the secretary that handles all kinds of natural resources and environmental issues here in Puerto Vallarta. And as I was mentioning just a second ago, here is one of the access, accesses to the ocean. Let us take a quick look so that you can know what to expect. The city in recent years has been going through the notion of protecting these accesses to the beach and making them be functional and whatnot. So here we are. Are you going to find the kinds of amenities here that you can find in other beaches? 
definitely not unless you're staying at one of the few uh, resorts or hotels that are located here but you can see a lot of people are not unhappy about bringing their own chairs and just hanging out and so forth and so on now let's go back to the main avenue in case you are not familiar with the Cinco de Diciembre neighborhood yay Karen now Cinco de Diciembre is a combination of a residential neighborhood with a fair amount of local businesses but an increasing number of foreign residents that are choosing to live in this neighborhood because it is more affordable than the neighborhood south of the Rio Cuale. Now, as you can see, if we look towards the mountains, Cinco de Diciembre has some pretty steep climbs, which you can look at as a benefit or an advantage or a disadvantage. You can find a number of places to live with great views of the bay. But then when it's time to walk upstairs or head up the hill with your groceries, it may or may not seem so desirable. Now, at this point, the city has done a lot of work with the sidewalks. And look at all these beautiful bougainvilleas. So there is a stretch of the road where the bicycles are able to go through. This is the bicycle path along the sidewalk, but it's better than none. And then there are all these shops that sell all kinds of, hola, como le va? El día de hoy no, muchas gracias, pero que tenga un buen día. See, a lot of vendors are gonna ask you to come and check out their stores. And all one has to do is say, no thank you, not today. With a big smile, although we're all wearing face masks, so a big smile may not necessarily be possible. Or smile to yourself, even if they cannot see your smile. Ooh, what was that? I now, missed that. Here <laughs> in front of me on the left side is Lay, the supermarket. So this is the supermarket of choice for some of the people that live in this neighborhood just because it's conveniently located. And on this block, I want to point out yet another restaurant because as you know, pescado sarandeado is one of the traditional dishes of the state of Nayarit. And there is a restaurant here coming up where you can find one of the best traditional pescado sarandeados and this would be Restaurante Rio Grande. Here at Rio Grande, there is a wonderful selection of seafood dishes that you can order, but the one to ask for here is the pescado sarandeado. It is the traditional fish dish from Nayarit, and it is really a wonderful thing to try. Yes, it is. It is wonderful. Buenas tardes. It's wonderful and messy, that's what it is. I am going to cross the street right here, and you can see right in front of me is Teatro Vallarta, the city's theater, which is now not doing much of anything because theaters are not allowed to do much of anything. But it has been the home of concerts, plays, performances, even opera broadcasts, when the opera used to be broadcast here in Puerto Vallarta. Along this stretch you'll find more small eateries, traditional candy stores, and uh, stores where you can find all kinds of souvenirs, 
to take back home. Some restaurants such as this one have uh, sitting right on the sidewalk, which may or may not be desirable. I find it a little noisy. And then I want to point out another shop, which I think is one of the most beautiful shops in town if you're looking for traditional Mexican wares and that would be Tlaquepaque, which is this store that is located right here. I'm going to go in and see if they will let me show you around. Buenas tardes. ¿Puedo pasar? So here we are. We are inside of Tlaquepaque and Tlaquepaque is not only the name of this suburb in Guadalajara where you can find a lot of trinkets, very traditional things, but here in Puerto Vallarta we have this beautiful store and it is called Tlaquepaque, just like the neighborhood in Guadalajara. And it is a great place to shop for traditional Mexican <laughs> trinkets, Chingaderas. traditional dishes, <laughs> traditional glassware, and so forth. I'm going to take two seconds just to show you everything you can find here. Look at all these beautiful glasses and tequila shot containers. We don't, we're not so crazy about tequila shots themselves. But look at how beautiful all this glassware is. You can find more articles made of clay and some decorative elements for your home. So if you find yourself looking for this kind of, of Mexican craft work, you oh. can find it here in Tlaquepaque, quite a beautiful shop that I totally recommend stopping by if you are in this part of town, if you are in Cinco de Diciembre. Con permiso, muchas gracias. Great store, just beautiful. Okay, so we're back on the street. And as I had mentioned just a little while ago, I have a craving for tacos and beer. And it has been a number of occasions that I have mentioned that one of our own community members, Sean O'Brien, has a restaurant here in Colonia Cinco de Diciembre, and uh, his place is called Mama Caguama Tacos and Beer, and what a wonderful coincidence. I am in the mood for tacos and beer. So rather than continuing forward towards the Malecon, which is right over there one block away, we are going to take a left-hand turn and go up two short blocks to find Sean's restaurant, Mama Caguama Tacos and Beer. And with a little bit of luck, we will find Sean at his restaurant as well. Oh my God, and it's not even two blocks. It's only one block. I can see it already. So here we go climbing up the hill. See, this is the part where Cinco de Diciembre can become challenging if you don't like to climb up the hill because a lot of it is located on the mountainside. But we don't need to go that far. Here is Mama Caguamas Tacos and Beer right at the corner of Peru and Venezuela one short block away from the church at Plaza Hidalgo and let us go in and see if we find Buenas Tardes Sean in his own restaurant and let's see what we find Buenas Tardes Esto es Mamá Caguamas Tacos and Beer ¿Y dónde anda Sean? Sean no está. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the boss is not in the house. So we don't get to meet Sean in person here. Sean and I ran into each other one day at, uh, at Costco. But check it out. It is a cute place. It's small, but it looks very, very comfortable. Let us ask to see the menu. Ah, I found the menu. So... There's all kinds of beer here, and there is all kinds of snacks and foods. Here you can have 
hamburgers, uh, shrimp cocktails, burritos, all kinds of things. Burritos? And I'll tell you what, what I'm going to do is that even if Sean is not here, I'm going to sit here and have a quick beer and have a little something while I get myself to the rest of the city and the rest of my adventure. But how nice to check out Sean's little place, Tacos and Beer, in person. I'm going to take a pause here and wish you a lovely day. And I hope you've enjoyed this walk of Cinco de Diciembre. And let us run into Sean at the broadcast later on in this week so that we can ask him, where were you when we came to visit your shop? Have a great day. And there's more, and there's more, there's more, because you need to know why you have to go to this restaurant. And I hope you're here, Sean, because I want to congratulate you. I want to give you the blow by blow of what happened. Um, and this, you know, if you're a consumer like myself, you know, this is the way you should be treated at any restaurant in town. And if you are a business owner and you're looking for people to uh, to work at your restaurant, this is the type of employee that you want to snag. I asked him for his name twice, but being a pothead, I can't remember what his name was, but Sean, if you're here, please let us know. But the guy that is running the restaurant was, first of all, he was super kind, and, and then he very quickly, um, Oh, there is Sean. Thank you. Sean, what is the name of your employee? Because I'm going to give you so much praise for him, it's not even funny. Um, uh, he, we, I sat down, and, and he showed me the menu. Then he brought out some salsas, and he asked me, do you like spicy food? And I said, uh, sure. And then he says, he went on to explain the three different types of salsas that were served. He told me exactly what to expect, and so forth and so on. And then I asked, oh, his name is David. Thank you. Um, he, I asked for an IPA beer because I love IPA beer. And then he proceeded to explain all the different IPA beers that they serve. And I asked for some tacos al pastor that I want to show you because they were beautifully presented, beautifully uh, prepared. The chef came out to say hello. Um, uh, the, the waiter, David, explained to me what salsa went better with the tacos and then when i when i ran out of beer he said well what would you like to drink next and i just said to him surprise me and he and he went on to give me all kinds of very thoughtful recommendations saying well if if you're eating this then i recommend this beer because of this uh, i mean the treatment the, the the service was absolutely exemplary sean all i can say is take good care of this employee of yours because it is employees like that that go way beyond just dropping the menu on your table to, that make the experience worthwhile. I don't live in Cinco de Diciembre, but I walk by it quite frequently. And I can tell you I am a convert. In fact, I bought a T-shirt. I bought my own T-shirt and I loved it because what the T-shirts say on the back, I have to show you this because it's priceless. I can't make everyone happy. I am not a taco. I just love that phrase, and I thought it was a wonderful thing to have on the back of a T-shirt. So, again, if you find yourselves in Cinco de Diciembre, I cannot, I cannot recommend this place. And Raymond uh, nailed it down. Great service makes all the difference. Absolutely. And and Sean, congratulations. Um, I sure hope that all your employees are as serviceable and kind and and, and warm as as David. Um, because I was very, I felt very, very pampered. I mean, I, you, your staff gave me the kind of service that I would expect, and often you don't get, or we don't get, at a fancy schmancy restaurant. I mean, that's the way it should be. When I see people trying so hard to make a good impression, particularly now in the pandemic, they deserve all the praise we can give them. And this, my friends, brings us to the end of today's broadcast, as always, I am loving the fact that you're here with us. I am loving the opportunity and I'm grateful for the opportunity to connect us to the best things we can have and enjoy here in the Bay. And if all day long, all through the broadcast, sorry, I've been looking at the camera above. It's because it's my usual camera. I forgot to load the batteries, but I'm really looking at you. Trust me. Um, 
thank you. Thank you again for being part of this community. As you know, we try to create as many bridges as we can with our culture, our destination, our country, our way of life, our politics, uh, our food, all kinds of things that help us enjoy ourselves better here in Puerto Vallarta. If you found something useful, inspiring, if you've laughed a little bit, please consider supporting our community. And as you know, um, if you become a supporter, you will be able to watch our brand new uh, video about everything you want to know about tamales, which will be exclusive to members for three months, and then we'll make it available for everybody else. As always, stay kind, stay happy, stay friendly. Don't be afraid of executions. They happen to all of us. Um, it's part of the process. And, um, and stay in touch. Stay in touch. Have a great day.